Welcome friends, I forgot to turn on my microphone. Uh, it's a beautiful party Monday, hope you're all happy to be here, hope you're having a wonderful week so far. Uh, tonight's going to be, well, depending on what you're interested in, it's either going to be a really boring episode or a, or a great episode of Big Deno TV, where I'm doing some gap filling and maybe some sculpting of this cool base that I'm working on. Um, this is the unglamorous part of dioramas, I'm afraid. Preparatory work. So much of it. Um, yeah. So what up? Ooh, you can't really see my face then. Well, that's maybe not a bad thing really, is it? What I'm trying to do on this base um, is just reinforce the theme of Earth. So here's the base so far. So I have a couple of sort of thoughts that we'll talk to a little bit later on, maybe when Buxo gets here, but just some ideas for what we might do to improve this. This is sort of a something I'm looking at at the moment. I quite like it, but um, we'll think about it. Um, and then yeah, so there's going to be some sculpting here that needs doing, uh, maybe some something there. <laughs> uh, cool little 3D printed thing, which is a little uh, reference to the wonderful people of Team Stonebeard. So, um, yeah. <clears throat> so we. We've got to decide what we're going to do up here. But anyway, that's conversations for later on. This is going to sit down for a bit while I prepare the models and do some sculpting of the models. So yeah, it's uh, been an interesting couple of days, friends. Had... Uh, fair bit on my plate so it's nice to be able to finish the three witches yesterday and <coughs> move into a new project today well yesterday afternoon actually I did most of this today I was at work Yeah, this is. Uh, I don't often whip out the old uh, the old sculpting putty, but there's um, some sizable chunks in these figures that need filling. So unfortunately, we have to we have to pursue that path. PVA glue is my preferred. Enough filling medium. So. I can show you how to do some uh, chainmail sculpting if you want. I don't need any chainmail on this guy, but I can show you how to do it. Surprisingly easy, actually. That 
was the main one, and then the second one was these little dreadlocks. And this guy. Yes, it's not as fun as it looks, friends. <laughs> Which is to say, it's not fun at all. That's actually fine. We've all assembled a few models in our time. It's part and parcel of the, uh, the hobby. You get better at it. Hello there, Timbo. You get better at it, so... the fun time. Thought your goblin was pretty good, mate. Feel like you uh, you definitely got an improvement out of some of the feedback that, that we gave, but there's uh A little thing I'd like to talk about, which is the uh, the skill ceiling versus the knowledge ceiling, and in a, in a very very simple way, um, yeah, the skill ceiling is your physical ability to do something. The knowledge ceiling is your understanding of that thing. It's it's very easy to understand something particularly things like feedback that's been given to you you know you can cerebrally understand something without being able to physically do that you know there are many many painters who aren't that good at explaining um, things and there's many painters that are very good at explaining things that might not necessarily be able to do the thing um, so you know the first step towards getting better at doing something of course is to practice it and so your uh, your first journey into the steps of value management and understanding value contrast good start Yeah, and you know the the very best advice will do exactly that. It will it will start your brain down a new neural pathway, and you'll start to feel that little sense of uncomfortableness as you're doing something you've never done before, and there are in the zone of learning. If you don't feel a little bit uncomfortable then there's a strong possibility you aren't stretching yourself enough. Now, there is such a thing as stretching yourself too far. 
which I see all the time. Painter's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I really want to do non-metallic metal one. Blah, blah, blah. But yes, the, uh, the path that you're on will hopefully help you be a better painter quicker. Which is to say, where you're actually practicing and trying to do new things. You can watch 8 million YouTube videos on how to do something and very very infrequently will that actually have any beneficial impact on your capability hey Kalen seven months wow crazy I reckon we're gonna lose Ash mate I reckon we've already lost her actually. I do owe you lunch. For sure. our control we've done what we can expressed our admiration and affection for her and that's all we can do and then support her decision irrespective of what she does which I will I'm sure you will also. <laughs> oh, look, in the words of Richard Attenborough, life finds a way. Well, that might not be Richard Attenborough, actually. I think that might have been Ian Malcolm, which is Jeff Goldblum, said that from Jurassic Park. sad <laughs> I would be sad it's not very good at expressing my sadness If I only had a heart If I only had a heart <laughs> That's a pretty good nickname for me actually <laughs> I graciously accept, Kalen. Just make sure that uh, that catches on with everyone, all right?
5k coins. Well, I appreciate the many hours of support that you have invested into this channel to accrue such a wondrous amount of points. There was a period there where I was going to offer a painted model for 100,000 points. I was like, yeah, that'd be a nice way to you know, say thanks. And then everyone stopped getting me to sing. Just stopped, straight up stopped. And then I had like seven people be like, well, I got 40,000 points. Yeah, I got 60. And I realized in a very short space of time, I would have had to paint somewhere in the vicinity of 15 models. So I canned that idea. I actually used to do a giveaway every month for um, subscribers. I used to paint a model and um, or paint a figure and then give it away to a subscriber. And it was interesting. So I talked about it a little bit um, why I stopped doing it. Um, you know, my uh, my streaming was pretty pretty regular back then. I was doing Monday nights, Wednesday nights, and Sunday mornings, and doing about three hour streams. So I was basically able to paint a model every every one to two weeks. Um, so I was like, well, I'll give away one uh, one a month. That won't be too impactful. Um, and so it was really cool. Um, and over those over those months, I think my subscriber count went up. Uh, you know, hundred hundred and fifty or something. But what what I basically figured out was if I simply painted a model and sold it to a collector with no time constraints and no pressure, I would make more than I was making at the time for the giveaway. Now, I realized that the giveaway concept is um, not really there to make money, but it is, right? So, um, yeah, the fact that I was able to not have to give away a model, and I just stopped doing it. And unfortunately, uh, my subscriber count dropped, which told me that none of those people were actually interested in me as a human being anyway. So, fuck them, they don't get models. <laughs> no, that's not true. I may go back to doing a giveaway. We'll see. Yeah, no, no judgment from me, man. I mean, the reason why subscriber offers work is because, you know, people are giving up their hard-earned money and want, want some sort of return out of it. So, I understood. No, no hard feelings from me for those people electing to not contribute any further. You did! You did win a giveaway. What did you win? Was it you won a? Um, did you win that uh, cat? The cat lady. The cat lady holding the cat. What did you? you no, know, you won the wood elves. Ah, the Nurgle guys. That's right. Yeah. Still, fun. They were awesome, by the way. You got your fucking lucky dog. They were mad. I really liked them. <laughs> B 
But yeah, I, I, I'm not. I'm not trying to make a career out of Twitch, and so I would much rather people put their subscription bucks into people that are trying to make a career out of it because fuck me it is a hard gig uh it is indeed a new project so let me just uh let me just step through the project for you all uh i started a little bit of it yesterday um on stream but basically uh there was a kickstarter a few maybe a year ago year and a bit for scale 75 for the signs of the zodiac so all of the figures that they had in the kickstarter were zodiac sign themed and so there's 12 signs of the zodiac each of those zodiac things are assigned to an element um and haha <laughs> thanks caleb um, so yeah, so this uh, plan, I've got a little MDF base here, um, and I've got exactly the same width MDF base here. So this one, which you should be able to see, connects with this one perfectly, like so. Boom. And then this one, which will also eventually get cut in half, will connect with these. So, um, the intent is I'm going to have four individual little bases like this. Each of the bases <coughs> uh, will refer to one of the elements. So this is the earth element, and the star signs that are related to the earth element are Virgo, Capricorn, and Taurus. So this is Taurus, thank you. Um, cool Minotaur dude. Very good. Uh, this is Capricorn. A horny man sitting on a seat. And then... Uh, this is Virgo. Which is could be the best figure in the entire Kickstarter, maybe. Not sure, but it's got to be close. Yeah, he did. He used... Um, opalescence or pearlescent sort of effect which was great really great I am unlikely to be able to achieve that <laughs> I mean maybe I could I don't know I don't think I'm going to try that um, because when you talk about projects like this you often run out of steam so this chick stands on the end on that little step like so I've got a picture of it, actually, I'll spring the picture up. Do, 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 do. Here is what it looks like. So I have a few, I have a few questions, thoughts that I'm keen to get some feedback and some ideas on. So here's the first one. Um, so this little, yeah, yeah, it's cool. So this little thing could go in here. I, I quite like the, um, like it looks like a, it's actually off a bust. <laughs> it's a really cool bust, but it looks sort of, you know, earthy, kind of. 
reminiscent of these trees here, but not really. Um, so that's option one, which I'm moderately keen on. Option two is one that is a lot more out there, but I am really keen on it. Maybe, I'm not sure. <laughs> All right, so this, this is a thing that comes on the basis of one of these models. It's a big circular thing, all right? So, I want to include this, I think, somehow on this because it's rocky and earthy. So the first option I've got is something like this. How do we feel about that? I quite like it but it kind of defeats the um, the lines maybe um, you know we've got we've got a really cool uh, flow so if you have a look at this guy who's going to stand here his axe is angled up towards the dude in the chair so it's sort of pointing to the dude in the chair this chick's sword is exactly the same. Her sword, although it's going the opposite direction, points up towards the dude in the chair. So you've got all these lines sort of driving you towards this champion. And so I feel like it's not working. It doesn't work. But that doesn't mean that it might not work like this. As a, as a back to this thing. What do you think of that idea? Yeah, so I also think that's better. Yeah. So I think we'll do that. Think about that base bit. Um, yep. Yeah. Uh, and then the last one. Did I leave this bit out? I thought I did. Um. one of my many bits boxes and this one is just full of cork and more cork and sticks and rocks that I found in the garden and bases and weird seed pods like this which I'm sure I'll find a use for at some point maybe where the fuck did I put that base Sure, I had a base that I left aside for this to discuss. This is gonna piss me off. All right, when I find the base, which I know is somewhere, it kind of looks like this, um, with some with some flagstone rock things. This is pissing me the fuck off now. I literally had it like an hour ago. I found it. Good. This is super cool. This shape. So what I was thinking was putting this here and then just trimming this flat so that we've got this really cool circular theme happening. I think that could look cool. That could look really cool. And then again, so playing with the playing with the theory of the elements. I'm trying to think about what element will go here and 
in terms of uh, what one makes the most sense to me, it will be water. Um, so if we have water here, this could be sort of a river, which would work okay, I think, um, for earth and have a lot of greenery, a lot of plants. However, the other option I could have is this side is actually fire. So we go fire, earth, and then we connect water on this side, which doesn't really change too much about what I'm talking about, but just would help me determine this side. So anyway, lots and lots of things to talk about. Keen for your thoughts. I got this little kit the other day at that event I went to in um, Melbourne and they gave me this thing. It's a nails decorator. I have no idea why they gave me this. I think it must be for buffing or grinding or something. What does this thing do? I want to cut it really. Yeah, well there's so there's one of one of each of the models for each of the zodiac signs. So on each one of these bases will be the three zodiac signs correlating to that element. So on fire, I think fire is uh, um, Leo, some other ones. Anyway, the problem I'm going to have with this project and the reason why I've decided to do it this way instead of all in one is some of the models are going to be really annoying. The, the water elements models are pretty shit. What does this do? Thank you. Congratulations on the purchase of your new nail decorator. Wonderful. I can enjoy a professional manicure and a picture-perfect pedicure in the privacy of my own home. Wonderful. AA batteries. I need batteries. Roger. You're a fire element. Yep. All right. Well, I think the fire one's pretty good. Fire's got Leo, which is great. What 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 star sign are you actually? I'll get yours out. You can have a look at it. Yeah, I think it's just a cheap rotary tool, which I don't really need. But they gave me a whole a whole kit bag of stuff. I got all sorts of cool shit. I got that. I got a really nice file. I got a knife. Got some other good shit. Um, alright. Sagittarius. Oh, uh, yours is okay. It's not my favourite. Aries. Aries is the other fire sign. Here's your Sagittarius. It's pretty cool. It's a centaur. I am not tight as fuck. How dare you? Where'd I put my fucking drill? Yeah. Did I get an R shot? Oh yes, good stuff. Would not have been something I'd recommend people get enthusiastic about is my ass. My Dremel broke the other day. Well, it didn't break, but the the cutting bit, the cutting tool, it broke. I haven't I haven't been to Bunnings to replace it, so we've got to do it old school.
Has anyone started Shadow and Bone yet? Season 2? I have not watched any so far. I'm excited to, though. I did, however, watch episode 1 of season 3 of Ted Lasso. Yeah, it might be all that you get. Oh, is it good, Captain Carp? You enjoying it? Yes, it sure will, Kalen. We'll be able to do some cool fire stuff. This probably looks real sus. I'll tell you this right, my day job involves a lot of safety conversations. <laughs> right? <laughs> so we're always banging on about safety this, safety that. When I get here at this desk, that all gets chucked out the window. I'm breathing in fucking smoke inhalation, I'm breathing in airbrush fluid, um, I'm cutting stuff without glasses, I use a Dremel just like fucking willy nilly. I don't wear, I don't wear a mask. It's just wild. Look, it's a fucking wild place to be at this desk. I'm lucky I haven't lost an eye. Yeah, licking paints, just. You name it, I do it. All right, we're almost there. Yeah, that's bad. I've done that. Actually, the one that probably would have taken my eye out was clippers. Clippers snapping. I reckon I've snapped about 10 pairs of clippers. The heads. Just gone. We did it. Well done, me. Yeah, don't, don't tell Craig or Lisa. I'll be, I'll be in trouble. <laughs> Bit of resin dust there for me to inhale. How good. I can get in. One of the reasons I think I'm going to be dead by the age of 40. Well, that's no good. I'm 40 now. I reckon we're a winner there. I like that a lot. Locking that in, so super glue. Yeah, no, no extractor fan, mate. Come on now. I do have an actual fan. Oh no, Dano, what are you doing? I do have an actual fan just here, blowing. the stuff straight away from me. Like it's literally just next to me.
which is minimal impact, but I figure it's better than nothing. I agree, it does look good there. I definitely think we'll go with this now. This feels fun. <laughs> hey mate, I'm not the person to take advice from. As I said, I'll be dead very soon. But before I die, I'm damn well going to airbrush in the comfort and safety of my own home. Hopefully I'll get five more years. If I get five more years, I reckon I'll be happy. This might well be it. <laughs> uh, I, I joke about me dying quite a bit with my friends and family because I'm quite tall and my pop died when he was, I think he was 70. Early 70s maybe. So, you know, I think it's, it's probably fair to assume that someone of my height and terrible dietary decisions. Mate, I was I was <laughs> I was crook as a dog, remember? I would have I would have got up there and karaoke the shit out of it. Did you see Willy on the decks? No, my hands won't be tied down. What's my go-to karaoke song? Mm, it's a good question. Uh, there's many, many answers I could co go with here, but it is definitely Shannon Null. What about me? There's a little boy waiting at the counter of a corner shop. Great tune. He's been waiting down there, waiting every day. His dreams won't give him now, they never stop. He's been pushed around, knocked to the ground. He gets to his feet and he says, what about me? It isn't fair. I've had enough now. I want my share. Can't you see? I want to live. <laughs> it was, Kaylin, yes. So take a step back and see the little people. They may be young, but they're the ones who make the big people big. 
So people who've been on the stream for a while would know there's a bit of a running gag with me and Nolsey that I love Nolsey. We were gonna we were gonna try and book him an appearance at Crimson Brush. <laughs> we looked into it. Uh, it would have been good stuff. It would have been good stuff. Unsurprisingly, we did not. But it would have been a, would have been a banger if we did. All right, I like that. <laughs> uh, would have been awesome. All right, let's. Two, two, chugga, chugga, big black car. That's it, isn't it? Angels brought me here. See, mate. This is secret deno tool number one. This stuff is the good shit. I just can't see it. Yeah, no, mate. Absolutely, knows he was robbed. He was absolutely robbed. G'day, Jared. Welcome, buddy. Yeah, secret, secret squirrel stuff. This is the absolute tickety boo. It's the best stuff. It is. It's called Need It. For the Aussies in the chat, I'll post a picture of it in a second. you absolutely cannot go wrong with this stuff in every project ever. See you, Space Toy! Didn't even see you come in. It's not it's not the best green stuff substitute, but it'll it'll keep you going in a pinch, I tell you what, for, for green stuff, but it just dries too quickly to be really a perfect substitute for that. But it's great stuff, like it'll it'll do a wonderful job. Uh, the reason I use it is because of how quickly it dries and how rock solid it dries. It's just 
incredibly firm and it, ha it happens in a really quick space of time so you can use it to build up some preliminary layers and then do more detail work with the uh, with the finer putties and it'll just uh, it'll work a treat it's a wonderful wonderful tool in the kit bag So we're going to sand that, this is in, this is in, uh, yeah, it's, um, Backfiller. How cool. Uh, I don't use it all the time. I've just started using it recently. I used a, another two-part filler. Um, but it works really well. Here's some aquarium rocks. That we're going to glue down. Tweezers for this bad boy. That's a fucking piece of shit. Yeah, the cheap the cheap stuff is what I normally use. Um, I just I actually bought some of that to repair some plaster in my house. <laughs> it's a little bit of everything all of the time. Crazy. So one of the um, common mistakes I see people make when they're doing bases is they don't think enough about scale. And it's usually most evident with things like tufts. You know, you see people grab a bag of tufts and they bang out some tufts and they're like, how cool do my tufts look? Because they look like real grass. It's so good. I'm the tough master. Give me my gold demon. Uh, and unfortunately, uh, very rarely does that actually look good or even right. So the key is, different scales so you need to have a variety of different sizes um, whether that's of rocks whether that's of plants whether that's of tufts and when you have that scale variation that's when things start to actually look good so i started with some bigger shapes and some bigger textures and now I am down to smaller ones. And then after that, I'm going to use smaller again. 
see me, I don't completely fucking murder someone. Mate, tufts are a wonderful tool and I use them very frequently. However, tufts by themselves are not enough. You need to use tufts with support. Tufts need a little bit of help. have to paint tufts mate that's step one step one I like that little thing let's put that over here somewhere yeah I like that a lot put it up there maybe yeah I might try that how easy can I cut through that Who do you support in the NRL, Jared? Are you, are you an NRL? Guy? Can't remember. <laughs> Good start to the year. At least they've been competitive. Well, at least they haven't been blown off the park. My team just got beaten by the fucking Warriors. What the fuck? Come on now, the Warriors are dog shit. I have been dog shit for years. I like that little thing. We'll use that somewhere. All right, let's think about Sandy Boys. That's a good cue to come in. Sandy oh, Andy. Oh. Sandy Andy, welcome. Hey, mate. How are you, mate? Yeah, I'm alright, mate. That's good, mate. G'day, everyone. Better turn your camera on, I guess, eh? Yeah. Mine's on, I think. Yeah, no, as in, i got to turn oh, your camera on the yeah. stream. Like magic. Oh, it's working a treat. Oh, look at that. That's pretty good. Do you, do you, do you something to your camera? Mm, does it look a bit shit? No, it looks no, better. No, it looks better. Does it look better? Yeah, it looks, I was going to say it looks better. Yeah. Um, is my sound a lot better as well now? Yep. Does it sound a lot cleaner? Yeah, cool. We're learning. Hey, Jared. How are you, mate? Timbo's in the chat. G'day. Heresy's in the chat. Hello, everyone. How's everyone doing tonight? On this fine Monday evening. Uh, yeah, I'm not too bad. What are we What are we working on here, mate? <laughs> well, mate, I talked about this on yesterday's stream, but since you haven't sent me a ship, I can't very well start our ship diorama. So, hey, look, it might have been tactical. Yeah, right. I see. I see. You're keen on the You're keen on the army painting at the moment, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just a little bit. Uh, good, Carp, mate. How are you? Wishing it was Friday. Uh, yeah, I can feel that. This weekend flew by. So this is the. Um, the Chimera uh, Kickstarter from last year. Scale yeah. Scale seventy five Zodiac. Scale seventy five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. Yeah. It's a good one. 
Really, really yeah. uh, some absolute crackers in there and then also some shitters, but most of the yeah. ones that, um, that I've got teed up on this first one are... Yeah, and it's, just, it's just like a collection of, like a, a collection of gods in a pantheon, isn't it? Uh, it's it's the signs of the zodiac, like oh, anim, yeah, animal yeah. representations of their zodiac signs. So, um, yeah, this one this one's Earth. So we've got Capricorn, uh, which is the the horned dude. We've got in the in the chair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we've got Taurus, which is the um, the bull. And then we've also got Virgo, which doesn't really make any sense to me because it doesn't look like it's a fucking Earth element, but. <laughs> It's also a banger, so no complaints. Nice. Uh, yeah, just in, who's in the chat? Uh, Heresy, oh, cheers, mate. Thanks, uh, thanks for that. Appreciate the support on the uh, the arc results. Uh, and Timbo, how was my weekend? Um, yeah, really, really good, man. I spent spent the weekend with my wife. Um, we went to the uh, went to the footy with some mates on the uh, on the Sunday just past. Watched my watched our beloved Hawthorne Hawks get absolutely dismantled by our longtime rivals Essendon in what looks like a battle of the a battle of the bottom four for this year. <laughs> um, so it's always tragic, yeah, tragic when you go to the footy and you see your team get get slapped up by sixty four points and mm. not look like they um not look like they really know what they're doing. But benefit of the doubt, they're a bunch of kids, so you got to learn to lose before you can learn to win. That's what we tell ourselves, eh? Mm-hmm. So yeah, that was that was my weekend, and then I um spent uh spent today doing some painting actually. Into the forty uh, k stuff. Yeah, painting. yeah, feeling a real real buzz for it. I actually um I have a bit of a story for this week if you want. Oh mate, please, if you, if you want me Kick to go straight off. into it. So it's a bit of an educational story for everyone uh, at home. Uh, um, so I was working on a unit of. Uh, 10 corn berserkers over the uh, over the week uh, and i set myself a pretty pretty reasonable goal to have them done you know the 10 i want it done in uh, in a couple of days um and for an audacious painter such as yourself that seems achievable yeah yeah and um we were we were on good form we were uh, we were making good tracks and then i uh, i decided that i wanted to just do a standard process that I do for a lot of a lot of miniatures. Um, the difference being on this one is that I'd sort of set them with oils uh, and uh, had some actual true metal on them. So kind of thinking about different finishes and different surfaces. So I was just looking to reset before I put my final highlights on. And I um, I did it early in the morning, uh, just before work. So I busted out some some spray, some varnish spray, and then uh, let it let it dry, or f- did what I thought was letting it dry, and then blasted it with some TS eighty, and utterly frosted them into oblivion. Oh no! Uh, so that's a full unit down, um, and completely completely cooked. Uh, so I spent a little bit more in that day trying to resurrect them, and unfortunately couldn't. And so there was only one solution, and that solution was to spray them all black and start again. Whoa, that's so we, painful. We sprayed them all black and we started again. <laughs> oh, that's painful. Uh, it's a stinger, but, you know, you live and you learn. And if you can get through something like that, then you can probably get through anything in the, that's going to be a bit shit on the miniature painting front, right? So Yeah, that's a good mindset to take in a tough beat. Yeah, that's... but... You know, we've had a few wins lately, and uh, the first thing I said to Yana is, "There's nothing like something like this uh, happening Just... to you to remind you that you're not top shit, and you know <laughs> you make mistakes and do stupid shit, and uh, you know it happens at all levels of painting. And all I can say yeah. is, live and learn, and uh, don't let something like that defeat you. You know, just get on with it. Look, I've said I've said this before, mate, but uh, Batman's dad has got a wonderful quote. It's why do we fall down, Bruce? So we can learn to pick ourselves up again. Correct. You know. I think there's something in that yeah. for all of us, really. There is. There is. Uh, and I mean, yeah, it would have been probably pretty easy, right, to just call it there and just go pick up with the display piece and start working on that and just cut your losses. But I don't I don't like... I don't like that for me. That's not for me. So, yeah. But we're at the other end of it now when we're coming to the final, final steps in the units process i've got to put some blood effects on and highlight some black and they're done so, so this is take two take two so i mean 10 has taken me a week 
rather than a couple of days, but you know, we've we've learned some lessons along the way. That's a tough beat. <laughs> it's a tough one, isn't it? <laughs> oh, I just think about all of my uh, all of my MCP. I think about imagine painting all, you know, ten yeah, of those, and yeah. then frosting ten of them. I would be fucking ropeable. Yeah. people in the chat how's their uh, how's their week been what's everyone been up to i've seen some hobby projects from from people who come and chill with us on um on friday nights popping up in discords and things good to see cool i think uh i think i saw did tim was it timbo who finished his um goblin yeah his little goblin and it looked like some of the advice that you passed on had um had made its way into the piece that's so always good to see Indeed. You said that you said congrats to me before you found out I was a Hawthorne supporter. Does that make you an Essendon supporter, mate? Or... <laughs> That's the way to do it, yeah. Also, good day. So this uh, this project was a bit of a spur of the moment one uh, bucks where I was just sitting there yesterday after I'd sort of finished the three witches, which I'll be keen yeah. for your final take on by the way. We'll whip them out later on. Sure. Um, yeah, and I was just like, yeah, I'm 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 keen to get a little bit into my backlog of figures, so mm. that I can feel better about buying some new figures. But as I was sitting there, I was looking at my pile of figures of paint. I was like, well, I haven't actually got that many in my pile of you know, just individuals. The thing that sort mm -hmm. of I feel like is weighing me down is the fact that I've got several big diorama projects. So I thought, you know what, I'm just going to start making a little bit of headway into those. Sounds, sounds great, mate. I mean, look, like, I guess for for, for the list that you've got, uh, our one is actually probably the smallest. Yep, it is. It is the smallest indeed. So it, it, by that stretch, it can kind of be kind of be slotted anywhere in the year that we want. Um, Yep. Which we continue to keep saying as we find new projects to push <laughs> in front of it. But, I mean, I take that as simply as uh, it, it's clearly not the right time. The right time will be the oh, right time. I love I love that mindset, mate. There's... there's I, I, there, I, I didn't watch a TV show called The Crown for a long time and I was explaining to Rocket, I'm not. I, I, I'm keen to watch it, but it just doesn't feel like the right time. I just, I'm not excited about it right now. And then there was a day when I was like, I'm excited about watching The Crown. And so we started watching it, and I loved it. I loved every second of it. But if I hadn't have been in the right headspace, I don't think I would have given it the attention and the appreciation that it deserved. And that is exactly how I feel about our yeah. diorama. I'm excited about it. I know we're going to have a great time. I know we're going to do some cool shit. But that doesn't have to be right this very second. Yeah. It happens when the time is right and when we feel like yeah, this is the game. See, that's the thing. I thought I feel like we had a nice little, like I like this idea that it might be a long journey and that we're just going to acquire little bits here and yeah, there. Yeah, we, We're on the, you know, along the way. That yeah, that'd be fun. Feel good for that, and then uh, it'll just come together as it comes together. Yeah. Uh, I guess we can both sit back with the confidence, knowing that we. I guess at this point, you know, without putting ego aside, you can probably attach prolific to both <laughs> of our names when it comes to painting. So. There's going to be no shortage of painting getting done in that time, but concur, mate. Prolific is a uh, is a good word. I, I I was doing a trawl through my putty and paint the other night, 
through through no reason other than I went on there and I was like, oh, fuck, I haven't uploaded for a while. And I went and had a look back through my projects. And fuck me, I've, I've forgotten. You've done a lot, mate. I've done so many fucking models, man. You've done a man. lot, a lot, a lot. Uh, it's really actually quite easy to, to forget, like even for people who are spectating it, how much you've done. And I really do think that that went a lot, like has gone a long way into like building your painting identity is like, like I think back and I think, man, you know, so the community at that time, because miniature painting was, was still like, when you started display painting seriously, um, it was not anywhere near as big as it is now, right? Certainly, like, certainly not in Australia, yeah. Yeah. But, I mean, yeah. Uh, people would have just been like beside themselves with like the fact that a piece of, you were probably dropping a piece every two days or something. <laughs> so, it, it, it was basically two pieces a week was the pace that I was yeah. going early on. Yeah. They weren't but good pieces, that, but they were there. Okay, they're like, that's it. Though. Some bangers, some not bangers. Like, but that's that's just painting in general. Yeah. So. Um. All right, let me let me. I'll just put this aside. I'm liking this actually. This is a nice little, <coughs> nice little shape, nice little flow. I'll come back to that in a second. Um. Yeah. So let's grab these witches out. You can have a bow peep at the witches. Drop some super glue on the ground, Dino. You're having a fucking ripper. Um, now I know you weren't the biggest fan of this colour palette. Yeah. So I'm keen for your thoughts on the girls. Mm. Right. So like I've had a chance to have a, a couple of looks at it and I think I'm settling in the like, I'm 70, 30, right? Yeah. I can see the elements that you really like and that really appeal to you because they also appeal to me uh which is if i'm stabbing in the dark it's the way that the colors are kind of playing together across the cloaks mm -hmm. um the shawls yep. uh the use of green like we have three ne nearly four different types of green and that's that's not um that can be risky right to have that many different types of green interacting with each other because you have like vibrant saturated greens on the staff you have desaturated greens on their clothes. You then have like a dark blue green on the shawls, and then finally you have like a like a light, almost um, lichen-y style green on the middle ones um, shawl, the brown shawl. Uh, but there, there is harmony amongst it all, um, which you know like is probably something that we've spoke about that you do pretty well, which is harmonising some weird, weird colours together and getting a pretty good result. So I like all of those elements. Um, I uh, I enjoy the composition of the piece. Uh, I think there's a missed opportunity to do something with the whole. I just wasn't quite sure that the hand was the thing to do. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, maybe it could have been cool to um, fill the hole with like a something flat and then make it a big bobbling cauldron in itself. Like the whole thing was like a cauldron. That could have been cool. Yeah, that's still um, that's still a potential. Yeah, yeah, you can still do it. There's no, there's no window on that, right? Uh, I like the actual cauldron. Like, I like the little, the, the little cauldron, if we'll call it that for the time being. I like the substance that's in there. I like the old weathered pot. Um, my, my biggest criticism remains that the skin is probably just a little bit too craggled for me. Hmm. And the composition of the hair is like two white, one brown. I would have like if I was going to do a two and one, I would have maybe gone. And flanked like white on either side and brown on the middle. Yeah, but see, do you I know, know you do like you... to do? I know you like to do stuff that's a little bit off. That's the that's the part of your brain that says things need to be sequential, right? Things need yes, to be yeah. one in order. Right? That is wrong. That is not how nature works. You got to no. trick you got to trick your brain into doing things that feel un un uncomfortable. You do, but also if something is aesthetically pleasing to the eye, it feels like it fits at times. As Agreed. Well. So hey, thanks, Al. Agreed. Yes, I'm. I'm not disputing that. Uh, hey, rapid. I would have to say that, in terms of where I rank the piece, it's it's in my upper mid tier. I don't yeah, think. Yeah, I, I think it can comfortably sit there. I wouldn't disagree. Don't think it's my best point. piece, but it's far, far, far from my worst, and I think. Yes. The exploration of colours that I went into, which is a, you know, a pretty significant departure from how I normally approach colours, is exciting to know that I can still do different stuff. Yeah. So. 
Yep. I think you should be proud of that one. I think that's a good, like it's a good piece. Um, would I have made some different choices on it? Sure, but that's that's just that's normal. You know, everyone makes different choices on stuff. Um, I like it. I like it more now than I did before. So that's good. Man, I really hate using um, foam. I'm really bad at using the foam. Maybe I think it's because like the foam that I use is not is too soft. Maybe was it you know for X like doing XPS? the and stuff? XPS foam or no? It's like figure case foam, whatever that is. Ah, uh, the stippling. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, right. you got you, got you, got you. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, I, 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 I think yeah. Stiffer foam makes that process easier, but. That's not, not that easy to come by, really. Stiff foam. Mm -hmm. Let's talk colour palette on this uh, on this project that I'm working on oh. now. Earth. Yeah. Earth element. The obvious choice yeah. is green, right? Green and brown. No, no, no. The obvious choice is a series of ochres and browns and red browns. Mm. That's, mm. The, that's the obvious choice. All that's right. a choice that will allow you to do more with your other colors. All right. So let's sort of speculate then on the others. So fire is obviously oranges and reds and yellows. Mm -hmm. Water is blues, blues and, green. and greens. Mm -hmm. And air is purples and whites. Sure. Um, Could also be um, pinks as well uh, and yellows. Yeah. Because if you think about like the really nice sunsets, Purple, pink, Ooh, and yellow yeah. is really prominent. So. Good one. Good one. Sunsets. I haven't thought about that. Um, ochres. Ochres. Mm. Mm -hmm. Red, browns. So, like, I'm thinking about colours like uh, Hull Red, uh, Ral from the AK Green range. Uh, I'm thinking potentially Wine Red, uh, Burnt Red, uh, Saddle Browns, you know, uh, Orange Brown. Hawk, all of these sorts of colours could be could be pretty nice. Yeah, so I'm, I'm into a lot of those colours, and in fact, I've used those colours a lot recently. Um, so I'm a big fan of them. Earth, to me, screams out of greenery. Mm -hmm. The you know the the concept of nature and Mother Earth feels like it's a green. Yeah. See, I think nature is green. But I yeah. think the earth is the earth, you know, mountains and uh, uh, boulders and, you know, uh, sand and aridness, like, you know, and I think a lot of people, when you say earth, go towards the, the nature side. So I think it's a nice change of pace because really it's all earth. <laughs> Interesting discrepancy that you and I have in this instance. Not necessarily a bad thing, but different, different. So yeah, the the question the question then becomes okay. So do you combine red and green, or, or brown and green? And I think that's probably where I'll end up going. But how do you balance that? Um, so. Um... Let me uh, let me let me bring this up on screen so you can see the. Uh... So it's a pretty it's a pretty um, you know simplistic composition. We've just got the central figure, the angles mm -hmm. on everything else shapes you up towards the central figure. It's all pretty straightforward. So here's another option that incorporates both. I'm just going to send you an image. Uh, I'm going to send you just two images. So I always fall back to whenever it's elemental stuff. I actually literally just look up elementals. Um, and here's a couple of really nice palettes for elementals. There you go. Discord? 
Yep. Yeah. yeah, just per personal, like, pay them, choose them. have a look at uh... and so just as a nice like a nice starting ground I think and then we can increase complexity uh, and concept as you go what do you think just two, two of the same subject matters effectively mm -hmm. but just done with a slightly different take each time I particularly like the color palette of the first one the warmth the warm oranges yeah with the, with the yeah. tinges of green um that could be quite fun to play around with but just want to make sure i'm thinking about the figures themselves you know it's all well and good to go yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah my color it has palette. to match the, the model but is the guy that you're holding now earth? uh all three of these are earth yeah yeah cool yeah, yeah. so, so this, this the is good a... thing about them is that they're like really bulky yeah the one that you're holding before is like really bulky squat strong muscular reminds you of a mountain almost yeah so that's that's taurus and yeah he's he's easy to fit into that color palette for sure he's he's gonna just sink right up he's yeah. all reds and 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 browns for sure capricorn I think we can make that work, but I think we'll, we'll, we'll tend more towards green on him to maybe create a warm green right in the center of the piece. Mm -hmm. So it's more of a, of a central focus. And then we'll, um, we'll use the other one, Virgo, to be a little bit more um, readies as well, uh, bronze armor or something. Sure. Yep, I think that'll work cool. <sighs> How are you going to snap this season? Uh, I got myself up like in a night. I got myself to forty-five, yeah. and then I've just dabbled. Like I'm not even playing on brand at the moment. I'm just uh, playing probably two decks from like, like I'm playing the like uh, uh, big head. What's his name? Um, Modok discard. Yeah, it's which fun. Is, like it, it's it's fun, but it's not that good. I don't think now. Yeah. yeah. Um, and playing a little bit of um. Uh, null destroy, um, null Nimrod destroy, uh, like a, it's almost like a death wave, null Nimrod type thing. That's kind of like good when it works, but trash when it doesn't. Yeah. So I think that the decks that are good all right now, like if you're not playing Shuri, uh, um, you're probably like gimping yourself a little bit if you've got her. I don't have her, unfortunately. Although I picked up Queen Jet and Sarah up recently, so I might be able to do some fun stuff. But I'm, I'm kind of, you know, a bit on and off focused on it, I guess. Yourself? Are you up there now? Uh, yeah, I just hit 78. Oh, nice. Yeah, I think it's actually the highest I've been. Um, which is cool. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah. Have you been going hard, though? Um, I have been going hard. Oh. <laughs> we are making some bloody boys. Bazaar and Moon Girl are still solid. Yeah, like the zoo decks, the zoo decks are always fine, um, but 
I mean, I'm not, you know, we've played through a few metas now and Gilmunga has been meta in every single sort of Gilmunga. format, right? So he kind of just blows up the whole thing. I love him. I love him. And it does not feel good when you set up for the whole game and they just, then you know, they're not a stupid player, so they just want to go Killmonger until turn six and they don't really actually have to play any power and you can just play Killmonger and clean the clean the board and they win. Killmonger's been really good because uh, I'm seeing a lot of Thanos now. Thanos yeah, he's, yeah, well, it deals with the stones, right? Yeah, so. those stones. But what, what a lot of people are doing is playing Thanos, stones, death in the last turn, dropping um, Thanos and death. Yeah. Um, and then putting, uh, and the other thing that's in that list is fucking leech. So they're just dropping stones into lockjaw. And leech yeah. just pops out and fucks you. It's that hard, um, that deck's got to like leech has got to be changed. Like, I know that they're not willing to at the moment. They think that he's the necessary evil to like shut down a bunch of decks. But uh, I mean, the card's just been good forever. Like. It, the, the way I you have to wait till Leech. five, sure, but I mean that's the thing, right? These lockjaw decks now that are starting to become more prevalent um, and actually a, a little bit more reliable uh, now that you're playing stones because you're getting these stone benefits and then whatever whatever it rolls into, yeah, yeah, like Leech just popping up. If Leech pops up early off your first stone, you're basically blowing the game up. <laughs> the the thing I find about yeah. Leech is, I as soon as Leech drops. I just tap out, right? Like, I'm, yeah, um, yeah. okay, cool. You, you take my one cube and you walk away. Sure. Um, and if someone snaps, like, on turn five or, or, you know, turn four, if they've got an extra power from one of the stones, I, I, I just know Leech is coming against Thanos and I'm like, that's yeah, cool, you can have your one cube. Yeah, I mean, and that's 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 the, the thing, right? That's the, the argument is that you can just get, you can just, you know, get one cubed and call it. But, that's not always going to happen anyway. Like, there's plenty of times where you... You've got to be able to uh, recognise You've that. already snapped in. Like, you've already committed. Because your yeah. start or your hand is just so strong. Yeah. Like, and, and the, like, no matter what people say, like, you can say be calculated, but good good snap players will... Like, I see good snap players snap early all the time when they just feel confident they, they're playing well. You know? Like, Major no Dodo... what their opponent's doing, they feel like they're going to be able to... Major uh, Dodo, welcome... Tell that chicken suck it. <laughs> um, the the deck that's gotten me from because I started this this season Are you at still twenty on the negative Another negative yeah. negative. It's so good. I got negative. I got Iron Man. I got Zola, and I got Null. Right, and in in the re the rest of the deck is just about how do I get those guys out at the right time. The two pieces that make it you can suck it the two pieces that make it um, work even when you don't draw negative early on is Valkyrie yeah and then Lockjaw because sure Valkyrie man so I'll, I'll often have like negative and uh, Psylocke sitting in the one space maybe two you know two two cards for zero power and people will pop a couple of cards in there and they'll think I'm fucking home here and then you just drop Valkyrie in the last turn when you've got, you know, mm -hmm. three versus two. And all of a sudden you win that lane. It's out of nowhere. And what's even better is when people drop Hobgoblin and they like Shuri Hobgoblin into that lane. Oh my God. Fucking putting Valkyrie there is just the creme de la creme of yeah, snap good, fucking good feelings. feelings. <laughs> snap feelings. It's fucking unreal. Um, but yeah, I'm... I'm I'm enjoying it a lot this season uh, because of the um, uh, because of the cards that I've pulled. You know, like mm -hmm. Null is really fun, and <coughs> yeah, yeah so, Null's a weird one. He's like he's quite fun to play, but he's not he's not so fucked that he's ruining people's days. Well, you can I still think. you can still like Enchantress him away, or you can still Shang Chi him off the board. You know, he's, he's yeah. not. He's not like Dracula where you just have to you suck can lock it. Him, you can lock out Null a lot as well. Like, like you, you can got lock him out with those Xavier decks. Like, because everything's happening pretty late in the game with Null. Yeah. So you, you can shut him out of the game. Like, um, with Xavier, uh, Spider-Man. Yeah. Uh, or, or just force him to where you want him to be, right? And just live with the... 
the, the card that's fucking me the most at the moment is Aero. Oh my god, every time she hits, she fucking drops. She's just fucking all my placements and yeah, ruining my life. Too, that. Oh, kills me. Here's one for you, Nat. I just finished these ladies. You can have a look at these single ladies. Nat, because I used your wood for this. Look at that. I'm a single lady. Are you selling your wood on uh, Stonebeard? Is there anyone else you're selling it? Where can we plug your wood? <laughs> Alright, Bucks. Your friends just rocked up. This is, this is the important one. At your house? No, no, I'm just saying uh, in the chat. <laughs> Alright. Hang on, I'm going to back in. I'm going to turn off my mic for a second. I'm sure you said some great stuff then, Bucks, but uh, because I muted, no yeah, one saw yeah. anything. But um, I'm just saying, um, I think Nat sells the majority of it through Jim, but uh, and herself. But I think um, Jim's um, Jim and Ray will be uh, buying up the next sort of well soon because they're getting married and going overseas for six weeks. So yeah, when's that happening? Uh, somewhere in the next little while. Like it's sooner rather than later. Are you are you invited? Did you get an invite? They're going to their wedding in yeah. Scotland. Yeah. No, mate. I what, think a stitch up, mate. what a stitch up, mate. What a stitch up. Fucking yeah. sort it out. All right, here we go. Need your thoughts on this. This is the important one. Me? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yes or no? Yes. But yeah. not that way. Can you make it, like, lopsided? No, no, yeah. No, uh, no, no, like... Yeah, like that. But, like... Yeah, that, that's pretty cool, I think. We Maybe might. drop the, the longer side down a little bit more. But yeah. Let's um let's put some models on it and have a look at with the models on it, I think is the right option. These are going to be some super bloody Clone Berserkers. Huh. I'm not sure which, which came first, the chicken or the egg, but... Dude sitting on a throne is not the... Uh, not the most innovative idea out there, let's be real. Alright, here is the rough composition thus far. Wow, I really like this. I really I really, really like this. This has just got yeah, nice. This is really good. Nice shapes. Just, is it just these three? Yeah, just these three. Well, so yeah, you, you missed. You've got, I know you've got all of them. But, but if you if you see, so I've got this on a plank of wood, right? Yeah. I've got a piece of wood that connects to it. So I'll make the next one on this piece, and then connect the two so that the two seams are joinable, yeah. but not necessarily required. So, and then I've got another piece of wood which I'm going to cut for the other ones. It's going to be glorious. Yes, they are really nicely staggered. They've got nice height and depth and 
also really, really good. Yeah, Virgo is probably my favourite um, figure. Uh, maybe out of the whole Kickstarter. All right, so let's put this. What's the one though? One with the axe that's like jumping down? Is that Aries or something? Yeah, yeah. Aries. Yeah. yeah All right. Super cool. I don't know. I think those that horns like that is the go. Sure. Do. Well, I'm, I'm not going to complain against it. I just yeah. Am I wrong the, though? It's the it's like the cookie cutter way to do it, right? Yeah, but it's it's just the nice flow brings you into it. Whereas this is, you know, I, I like weird, but this sort of looks more like a moon, which doesn't really. I mean, this looks like yeah. A, what, what I would what I would probably like do horns. is I drop it down lower. I was going to do the uneven one. I'd drop it lower in the chair and then have it, yeah, like that. Yeah, maybe a bit more off center. Yeah, like so. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, potentially. I think that's what made it. What made the Carol Rudy vampire really cool is like the uh, uh, cane. Is it cane? Yeah. Yeah. The, the way yeah. that he did that was quite clever. This just looks like this just looks like horns though, which feels like it's the right play for this, yeah, yeah, this piece. Yeah. We're like just said, we're just talking, it's, Andrew. It's, yeah. We're just talking, mate. Can you relax? Mate, you're the one that's fighting this this killer argument for this thing. <laughs> just do it. Shut up. <laughs> All right. Mate, Andy is just fucking pushing my buttons tonight, Ben, hey? He's just like, fuck you, Deno, you're a fucking idiot. He's still mad at me about the the, uh, the witches, I think, deep down. I am mad at you about the witches. They're fucking magnificent, and you're a dickhead. <laughs> Robin, not a bad idea. Not a bad idea. But one of the things that uh, I like to think about with this sort of thing is um, the the flow of a model, like where your where your gaze is drawn, and with something like this, um, these lines drag you sort of down into this guy. Um, you know, they're not really pulling you away from it. Whereas when you go something like this, you're instead sort of looking up here. That's how I that's how I see it. Um, this potentially has the opposite problem where you are drawing people um, downwards. Yeah. So I don't mind that though. I, d I definitely. Well, what happened with the witches, Ben? Oh, I, I just I didn't. Um, he didn't like I him, didn't, Ben. He didn't like him, mate. Didn't like him as much as Trent wanted me to like them. Well, I see. He did not like them, but. Mostly because he's a cockhead. <laughs> I don't think you had me around to just tell you all the time how great you are, mate. I don't, mate. I appreciate your honesty and your truth, even when it's wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Might do some milliput sculpting. That would be fun. We're, uh, we're not far out from uh, Adepticon, mate, which is a, a few painting competitions coming up there. Yeah, so there's the, um, got the the what path of the worthy for yeah for MCP. MCP, and then is there another one they don't have they don't have um, are, they having, are they having demon there this year or not? They might not be having demon there this year because they've got Warhammer Fest on five weeks later, so no. or four weeks later or something. So uh, not sure. Feels weird without a crystal brush, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. When was the last crystal brush? When did they can it? Two years 2018? ago. 2018. No, it was two years ago. It wasn't that long. Yeah. Good. Good thoughts. Good thoughts, Major Dodo. Um, look, there's probably no one right answer there's just a lot of subjective 
feelings. What ifs, a lot of what ifs yeah. and could be's, yeah. And so, the one that stands out to me the most is replicating the horns because two of the figures have horns. I feel like that's the story and that's the right path, but. I'm open to a few ideas. I haven't glued it down yet, which is a good sign that I'm open to being wrong. I bought a bought a um, a new board game yesterday. What'd you get? I haven't played it yet. I'm hoping to play it this week. It's called Star Wars, the deck mm-hmm. building game. It's a two player mm-hmm. game, and you start with a hand of ten cards, and you have some cards that allow you resources and some cards that allow you to fight and one plays the uh, Empire and one's the Rebel Alliance and I reckon I could have put my whole house and my whole savings that Ben would have been the first comment in the chat the moment you said Star Wars yep. and I would have and I would have made it all back plus something and <laughs> in your turn you play all the cards from your hand and you get to activate their abilities in a different order some of the cards will be like capital ships that can defend your um, your base, and some would be like characters like Princess Leia or Darth Vader, and they'll do cool shit. Um, it's just a it's just a deck builder, right? But it's Star Wars themed and it's one v one. So, oh yeah, actually, I don't, have you played Major Dodo? You're a, you're a, you're a board gamer, if I remember rightly. Uh, it looks really cool, Benny. I'm, I'm yet to play it, but looks like a fun little, fun little thing. Ha <laughs> uh, You're unfortunately talking to the wrong crowd here because these guys will be like, "Yeah, you should play the fuck out of Magic." Oh, you played MTG all weekend. You're back in that. Is it the Lord of the Rings one, Ben? Is that why you're back on it? <laughs> Oh, nice. All right, Bucks, important question. Yeah. June or July, whatever month the uh, Sydney, Sydney event is. is. Yeah. Yeah. Let's assume for the time being that you're not going to be asked to judge. Yep. Which you may be asked to judge, but if they do decide to leave you to enter, what are you going to bring? Mm. What are you going to bring? Are you going to put something together for it? Yeah, I'll put something together for it. I might continue my um, my trend of doing something a, a, a week and a bit out from the event. Um, uh, as it just seems to be a nice um, focuser for me. Yep. Um, I won't have a heap of stuff done because I'm um, more army stuff, but I might might be able to do a, like a 75 mil in a bus. Um, maybe get our land finished. Uh, my 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 passion right this second is is not with uh, with bus. It's it's a weird one actually right now. I, I've I've be, I've like the nuffy has come out in the last little bit. <laughs> Let's just say that. Uh, it's been about the the small scale. Yeah, I'm 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 feeling you. I went through my MCP journey. Yeah. So I, I feel you. Um. It's gonna it's gonna rock up pretty quickly. Like we're we're basically in April now. Um, yeah. And then. Uh, yeah, this like due to releases and things like that. This this year for for me is like gonna be a very uh, that time of year is gonna be very busy as well. Uh, so my focus will probably be much more in the um, uh, 28mm or 32mm heroic stuff um, uh, sort of all round so being in it might be I might be actually more motivated at that time to do something a little bit uh, a little bit to the display angle um, 
So yeah, look, I would like to do something in 75 millimeter soon. I haven't done anything in that for a little while. Since Probably since I did Spartan. No, no, I did Targa and I did the tree after Spartan. The dwarf and the tree, the j dwarf I get the oh, yeah. and then the mean tweets. Mean tweets was good. Thank you. I think I'm gonna sell that very soon. Oh, cool. I'll put it up for sale very soon. I think I'll put that up for sale. Um, the Rahel, uh, the Chicken Quest. Oh, Chicken Quest was a banger. Uh, well, Chicken Quest has done well. That's one back-to-back -back golds at its events. Um, I've got Sharky I could probably get rid of as well. The little little gnome sheep. They're all all ready to move on, I think. Uh, I've got a lot of historical stuff too. Uh, 54mm historical stuff that's built up. Um, I spent my, uh, my afternoon listening to some Zimmer. Uh, while painting and that was getting me g'd up for i like to partner music with the projects i'm working on obviously and then i like sometimes like, the music that i'm listening to inform my next projects Ooh. a bit, bit like that there's a topic there's a topic for conversation right because sure. i am i am not at all about that so no. i'd like to talk no. about that more but we might save that for next week so sure. prepare some thoughts on how music shapes your miniature painting experience um, yeah, well, it's a pretty personal one for me. It's like prevalent in in all of my miniature painting music. Yeah. So, while um, <laughs> while Heresy for Heretics is here, I am actually joining him on his podcast or something this week. I think. Yeah. Uh, I think we tossed up Thursday night's probably going to work better for me, mate. Uh, what are you guys chatting about? Fuck if I know. He just said, "Big Dan, I need celebrity power on my podcast because Ninjon wasn't enough." And I was like, "Oh, no. Oh, is it thing though? Is that um, is that a uh, apple? What? Applesauce. The original applesauce. Is it? I don't. I don't know. I know. Do, do they go on the podcast together or something? I think. I could I, be tripping out here, but I think. I, I think you're tripping. They're connected balls, in man. some way, shape, or form. I could be way off, off here, but tripping balls. Could be. Tripping balls." Well, is he American or Australian? No, he's Aussie, mate. Oh, well, then I'm definitely tripping balls. Never mind. Sorry, man. <laughs> this, uh, yeah. Um, I, um, Applesauce, you know, the original Applesauce. You've seen his name. He, he, <laughs> he does podcasts as well. And I'm pretty sure he's done podcasts with, um, with Nim John Nim too. John? But he's also like a heresy player. So I think I was just grabbing a bunch of stuff together there. I don't know why I made so much of this stuff. I just create my narrative. Oh, you know what you do with it? What? Just start beating it up, man. Yeah, and turn it into rocks. little pebbles and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. I got a yeah. big collection of them over there. I feel like I had a. I feel like I had a thought, what I wanted to do with it. Or like flatten it out as well. Yeah, create sheets. Yeah, sheets is maybe not a bad idea. Maybe I could roll my green stuff roller on it. Yeah, I've seen people do that too. Yeah, no, music, um, that'll be a great topic to talk about next, next week. Um, I'll, I'll be fascinated to hear your uh, hear your thoughts on that because yeah, I listen to music very, very, very infrequently. Yeah. Extremely. But you do enjoy music. Like, I, I spent a whole weekend with you and music played a big part of your, of your weekend. Yeah, you know, yeah, like, yeah. You're driving, you're listening to music. Like, well, that was only because it was easier for me to listen to music than podcasts or whatever. But yeah, yeah I, I like music. Don't get me wrong. I like music, but I'm not out there playing fucking tunes every minute of the day. Yeah. Um, whereas some people I know do do that. Uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's probably me. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, we'll, we'll say, we'll say, right? Like without doubting it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, I'm, I'm just keen to hear how you, how you feel that is, uh, something that can influence your painting. I think that's a fascinating topic. Yeah. 
yeah, Ben is Ben is the same. He he is one with the tunes as well. Like music is connected to his whole process as well. Yeah, yeah. Like I I, I sing all the time when I'm painting, and and so let me let me explain. I, I, yeah, I'm keen to get you to talk about next week. But let me explain what what my musical stuff is. So I when I was at work when I first started working at the place I'm at now, um, we would have would have the radio on all day but it would just be like pop songs and popular songs from mm-hmm. what was on the radio like it wasn't yeah it, it wasn't it wasn't sourced it wasn't, it wasn't, good, like it wasn't good music with a, yeah <laughs> it wasn't good to listen to yeah it wasn't good music put it that way it was fun and so we used to just we used to crank out the tunes and have a sing and have a dance have a laugh it was awesome but i didn't i didn't go home and then be like wow that song really moved me today yeah yeah, that, that, that song is going to have a huge influence on my life. Nothing like that. It was always just sing along to songs, which is how I know all the words to like a whole pile of songs that are popular songs because the radio was always on at work. But, yeah, music influencing, influencing artwork, great topic. Keen to hear it. Could even be our first podcast topic. Could be. We'll see how the conversation next week goes and we'll decide. Yeah, I've got some I've got some weird um, some weird things that I do and hang ups and like processes that sometimes I have to go through. Oh, this is this is gonna be fucking awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm fucking jazzed for it. Yeah. <laughs> that's probably how my workmates felt Matt they were like Deno how you going buddy we're going to turn the tunes on cool man they just didn't tell me it's because they didn't want to hear me fucking talk Hey, Stormy absolutely cut me to ribbons on her stories tonight. It's a fucking banger. Did you see Is it? She? No. Go and have a look right now. It's all time. Yeah. Classic. Well, is it an ask me question? Yeah, yeah, it's one of the questions, yeah. Did you ask that question? No. So the most horrible experience you had, is that the one? No, 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 no. Oh, let me, is there another one? Yes, yeah, later, check. yeah. Oh, she's got heaps now. Oh, yeah. Shit. I had to refresh my Instagram. Yeah. What do you think about Sedel contrast paints? What got you into miniature painting? You you're really amazing at it. Yeah, which uh... <laughs> you'll know it when you see it. <laughs> Hardest lesson you've learned on your painting journey. Is that you? Nope. Don't ask me, please, pretty lady. Is that you? No. no. No, that's Jess. Oh, okay, yeah, cool. <laughs> yeah. That's a, that's a good guess. Yeah, she's, she's funny. She's a funny lady. She got gotcha. you. It wasn't even me. I'm going to go back and listen to her, um, her other, some of her other answers, though. It wasn't me It wasn't me that posted that question, believe it or not. Wasn't it? No. Right. You know what? I have a couple of culprits in mind who I think would... Think one Julian Duratio. Ah, uh, maybe. He was a. You big have a couple. Of, you have a couple of big fans, mate. I do. 
Oh, I see. Yeah, one of those. <laughs> one of those two. Yeah, one of those two. I reckon. Maybe. I had a little listen to um to your stream yesterday, uh, just this morning, and you were chatting about an interesting thing about uh, miniature artists undervaluing their work. I thought that was an interesting topic. Hmm. Uh, yeah, I mean, without going into too much detail, we we have a tendency to, um, and this is this is not just in specifically miniature art, but but. All, all aspects of life, we have, we have a tendency to put things in the lens of what we ourselves deem to be acceptable. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and so I'm, I'm, you know, reasonably able to purchase things for myself that I like, and reasonably able to afford to to live a cool life without necessarily. I wouldn't consider myself rich, but I'm able to do cool stuff, and so. When someone says to me, "Hey, I would love to buy some of your models and pay you thirty bucks for them," I say no because I think that my worth work is worth more than that. Mm -hmm. But I've also had some people turn around and offer me more than what I thought they were worth because that's what it was worth to them. So we we have a tendency to put our own lens on things. Uh, from a price and I think yeah. it's important to uh, try and try and be scientific I guess in, in your calculation and understand this is my price um, well, do you think that it comes from the fact that in all honesty a lot of miniature painters right who are, who are or a lot of artists probably can't really like afford art right yeah like if yeah. they were buying art they, they probably can't afford yeah, it. yeah yeah that's a fair fair statement you know, I'm 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 at the very bottom end of the scale in terms of what people pay for miniature collector pieces. Very much. So. Like I I charge pretty. You charge what I'd expect someone to charge who has a full time job and uh, has a like I guess a mission statement in their paint, right? Yeah. Like you're like you know I I move quickly. I subscribe to the law of diminishing returns you know and i have a process of cost right so you're yeah. like you know tools tools plus uh the subject matter cost then time spent yeah right Done. which is absolutely so, bang on and accurate and correct to everything that i do so yes yeah so but i guess for a lot of other people out there so that that like is why i think you have quite a streamlined cost and, and uh like a know you system right yeah but, I guess to a lot of artists out there who maybe aren't that way inclined, who diddle daddle on their pieces, who get hurt emotionally on them, you know, <laughs> tortured artists, blah blah blah. I, I can see why they're. You and Ben. Yeah. Uh, yeah, sure. Um, I think there's a lot of them out there. Yeah. Um, I think we're probably on the on the harder scale. I agree. Yeah. Uh, than a lot of a lot of people out there doing this, but. Um, you know what I'm saying, yeah? Like, that. there's a lot more emotional attachment to it, which drives the price up for them, uh, but also means that they're actually not making as much works as you. Yeah. So you got your two options, right? You've got your either I make a lot of work and sell it at a, at a certain cost, or I make a little amount of work and, and inflate the cost. Yeah. And I always try to be really transparent on, on here. Like, I think there's there's a an aura or a mystique or a, or a something around display artists or I think we I think we get fixated on stuff a little bit too easily so I, I always try to share as much as I can about my mindset my approach um, to demystify that in the same way that I'm passionate about you know opening up yeah. judging and that I think and so you've got a little segue that I can lean into here if that's yeah. all right yeah 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 you said, you said we as display artists, and recently in the last few days, I've, I've kind of decided that I don't want that title anymore. Ooh, all right, all right. Uh, I don't, I'm not a display painter, I'm an everything painter, right? Yeah, like, right. I paint everything. I paint well, armies, it's probably, I paint it's, it's display, probably fair. I paint it's probably fair figures. to say you're an artist, right? Yeah, 
yeah yeah the the, t- the term display artist is is um yeah not exactly correct for for you or i like i mean I'm, yeah yeah correct right. and i don't want to be defined by that either because like i i um i love all of the subjects i paint like all of the different mediums in in this art form i like to do yeah um and i want to be really good at all of them you know what i mean um and i I guess a little example of this is like when i walked around the room like i I have a competitive nature right we all everyone like who's close to me knows that yeah um and when i walked around that room at art and i looked at all the armies i'm like maybe i want to win this award (laughs) you know um now i'm not obviously saying i just enter it and i win it but i'm saying like you know that that could be a you would you would if you went to Pardon? If you entered it, you would. Potentially, yeah. I don't want to count my chickens, but... Uh, you get what I mean, though, right? Yeah. Like, um, <coughs> so it's like another another strand is opening up, another another avenue to, to pursue uh, there. Um, yeah, so, I, I don't know. I think we, we, should, we should move... I, I use the term display artist because I think the majority of the stuff I paint would fall into that category but i think it's probably fair to say miniature artist is, is a yeah. is a fairer thing because we certainly don't do a lot of painting right like of, of traditional two-dimensional no artwork no. so miniature artist is a much more catch-all that isn't necessarily displayed specifically yeah so yeah because it's not like it's all like you know like yeah painting a diorama painting these huge dioramas so i noticed you linked up um uh, uh, Chestnut Inc.'s uh, oh, how English good is it? guide on Gotham, right? Yeah, how like, good is it? That to me, that style of hobby is actually a completely separate entity again. Yeah, right? yeah. Like doing that kind of display is different to display painting and it's different to miniature painting. It's different to uh, uh, scale modeling and it's different to army painting because yep. it's a collaboration of all four. Um, so sort of it starts a new tangent again. Um, so, so to go back to cost, so my pricing is, is pretty much fixed, right? I, I basically say, this is what the model cost me to buy. This is, uh, how many hours I spent doing it. And my price is that plus $40 per hour. And then I look at what, what price comes out and every now and then I'll just tweak that based on how good I think the piece is. Or if it's you know if it's one that I really yeah. like, you know, pretty pretty basic dumb guy math. So I don't I don't overcomplicate it. And so you know most of the figures I buy, with exceptions, are about 50, 50 to hundred bucks. And then most of the time I spend between five to ten hours on a model. So that will be uh, five hours is about two hundred bucks. Yeah. And ten hours is about four hundred bucks. So my pricing is generally between 250 to 500 for a piece. Now, mm-hmm. I quote in US dollars for a number of reasons because it's more universally accepted um, when communicating with collectors. Uh, second of all, because it gets you a fucking mad dog kick on the exchange rate. So oh, yeah. actually I get more money, which is mad. Um, and third, it, 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 yeah, you just always consistent. Well, it's just universal, like it's yeah. an easier business. You're like, not you're not trying to then universal. quote, you know, one guy in euros and one guy in USD and another guy in Australian dollars. So, and that way, I have a fixed concept of how much my pieces are worth. So that's my ballpark range for any piece I paint and sell. Now, I've bought a lot of pieces, and I am very yeah. cheap. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And so, like, I came in uh, to the market uh, in the last year. Oh, yeah, end of last year, really, September last year. Um, and I opened at a similar price point uh, under your, like, sort of guidance for where I was at. I think I probably undercharged on a couple of pieces, but I think that's okay. Um, when you're first getting out there, if you don't have a name to the brand, then it's, um, or, or a brand, it's, you got to start somewhere. Right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, so that's another thing you've got to factor in as well. Like, what's your name worth? What's your brand worth? Like, there's, yeah. yeah. And, and that's one of the things that I've been really fortunate. I, I actually was able to sell stuff. Like, the very first model I sold was not 
by me going, hey, I'm trying to sell this, guys. It was a guy messaging me on Instagram saying, hey, man, do you sell any of your works? And I was like, yeah, yeah I can sell my works. And then from there, I was like, hey, that was awesome. I got to fucking sell my models and get money for them. How good is this? This concept of capitalism where you exchange money for goods and services. It's fucking tremendous. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's, there's layers to it, right? Because, like, the other day I was thinking, like, how much is money important to me versus the artwork that I make? Like, you know, so there's, like, there's layers on this, this conversation. Now, I, I think the money is not really, like, I guess the idea or the concept of money for, for art is not, the thing that motivates me when I'm selling things, it just, what motivates me is that I can buy more stuff to make more stuff, right? Yeah. That is exactly it in a nutshell, yes. I want to buy more things. I need money to buy those things. Pretty much everything I sell, the money just goes into an account, which is my fun yeah, stuff. It's like now. a hot hobby slash fund, right? Yeah. And so stuff yeah, will, I'm, stuff I'm will go in yeah. and stuff will go out. So. Yeah. Yeah. So it's kind of, you, in essence, you're actually like, you're treating it like a business more than, um, more than, um, I guess, like maybe an artist who's just moving on their works for other. Yep. Like, oh, this is what I could use I, my. I don't know. I'm, I think I'm rambling a little bit, but you, I think you get what I mean. Well, look, and, and this is, again, this is the fortunate position that, you know, Andy and I find ourselves in. We, we're not full-time painters. We can do this for fun. We don't need to sell stuff immediately or urgently to be able to eat. And so I don't yeah. judge people for pricing their work at a price that is going to sell. I just think that we, as a general rule, have driven the price of things down too much by, um, by virtue of the, the scene or, or the, the collector's well, the painters, you know, in the painting companies that do five, you know, five dollar army painting models. Five dollar army painting models is great. Knock yourself out. Five dollar army painting models is a good price, but that doesn't mean that a display figure should be fifty bucks. Like, no. The people, the people who can paint if, display figures. If you if you are trying to buy display works really cheap, then I would say you probably have no real idea about what goes into them, mm. and. Uh, maybe approaching it more from like a like i don't know like like a modern way of purchasing art right where it's just like well i could just like buy an image and put it on my wall or whatever like you're not really concerned with how it's made it's concerned with what it looks like yeah um yep but this is all pretty new to us as well i mean you know, miniature miniature painting on, on this level has not actually been a, around for that long, and has not been a market for purchasing for that long. So I think everyone's just trying to figure it out too. Yeah, for sure. I, I'm I'm not I'm not sitting here judging or saying that those people are doing mm. the wrong thing. But what I am saying is, price yourself higher because you're worth it. Yeah, correct. That's correct. And, and maybe you don't get someone who, like, maybe you got to hold on to things a little bit longer sometimes, right? But yep. the move it. But someone will eventually really like what you've done and want to get it, so. Well, Nat, you're, you're a fucking prime example, mate, of someone who needs to price themselves a little bit higher. An absolute prime example. Because your work is on par with some of the best painters in the world. And here's you going, oh, but I'm not very good. Fuck off, idiot. Like, seriously. People would be very, very lucky to have a Natalie Shizmazik piece in their collection. Let me tell you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Jared is uh, like, uh, you know, Jared's got a, like a wonderful private collection that he's been working on, and I think it's only going to grow. So his perspective is probably really interesting because he is both a buyer and potentially a seller, right? Yep. And Jared will, uh, I'll give you some advice, mate, for, for how to sell. But the best way is uh, 
to get yourself out there on your Instagram, your socials. What's your Instagram count at now? You got more than Bucks? It's not a high fucking bar. Bucks has got like seven people following him. Instagram doesn't much like me, mate. Doesn't much like me anymore. I don't think it much likes uh, any anyone really. <laughs> There was a there was a period there where I was in front of DC. I think I've told you this. I was killing yeah. it. I was on like 15k, and DC was on like 11. And I was like, "Well, this is it. I'm I'm just gonna I'm just gonna stay in front of DC forever." And then he started painting Space Marines, the fucker. And yeah, that's all. It, all I mean, look, that's not all it takes. Uh, <laughs> you know, that's a bit of a meme when when um, when we say stuff like that, but uh, it certainly helps. <laughs> So now, I'm at 22. I think he's at 30, isn't he? He's probably well over 30 now. He yeah. should he should be at oh, like he 50, should be at 50, you know, 60. For sure, for right, sure. Right. Um, yeah. Instagram's not so much interested in, in our demographic. What what I did do, Jared, uh, in that time when I was when I was growing crazy, and this was not. An intentional hey i'm gonna fucking try and grow my social media presence it was simply i was painting heaps and i was posting figures heaps and like that was that was in my most prolific period so i was painting every day posting stuff every day and finishing stuff all the time so, you're also you're also doing it at the right of time right yeah. like it was four years ago nearly five years ago now yeah like instagram now has got no real what, what's instagram's incentive to as a business to uptick showing your stuff when you've got 20,000 followers when you know like someone who's got I can five. tomorrow start a cringe channel right yeah where I just get people to send me shit reels and I can probably get myself 250,000 followers in my first year yeah you know yeah, yeah. I, I I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't recommend trying to grow your social media presence as your one and only goal but I think consistent regular posting is mm. uh, important and look like out of all of us even though ben might not have as big a following as you trent or as uh as dave i think ben knows the most about this sort of stuff yep. um and tinkers with it the most to try and to try and figure it out uh, well benny's being that it's also a part of his what ben he does with awesome at it now he's awesome at it now like you see yeah you see his stories they're big on stories and reels you know he's, yeah. he's hitting all the right stuff for what instagram wants now and yeah but he, he's hitting all the right stuff yeah yeah and he he still gets put in instagram sim bin yeah he got put in instagram sim bin for four weeks because he, he tested doing a paid sponsor to see how it works yeah um and they immediately like just can him, right? So his his reach dropped from what it was, like substantially. Which you know, you hear people talk about like quotation marks, shadow ban and all of this sort of stuff, you know. Uh, I think did you see Moses was doing a whole bunch of test stuff recently with Instagram? Yep. You know, like people are aware of, of it being a pretty trash platform these days for for us. Um, but it's the one that we've got, right? We don't really have another one at this yep. point, so so Jared, to, to answer your question, mate, uh, the best way for you is to, to post that you are going to sell some stuff on your Instagram, on your stories, and then get yeah. some of the big dogs like uh, myself to share it, and that'll yes. that'll broaden your reach to people who may be interested in buying. So yeah, and you're already doing all the right stuff anyway, Jared. Like the right stuff is you know. Shows going to shows is really important because just 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 as there are artists at shows, there are buyers. You know, buyers go to shows and, and want to get stuff. Uh, networking is going to be at the center of it all. Well, I feel pretty pleased with my work tonight. Actually, I'm, um, I am basically ready to go. I, I have done a serviceable job of covering these dudes in blood. You know, enough for uh, for. Can have some planty babies uh, here, some planty babies here, a little plant baby here, some little planties over here. 
got cool negative space here and here and here and here and here we got cool flow we got cool horn shapes all over we got lots of circularisms that's great stuff oh, you know this is really i got a question for you yeah what do you think about uh the new scale 75 range that's come out uh i'm gonna go and have a look at it right now yeah and answer that question on stream sure is it a, it's not a kickstarter it's just there uh yeah i mean you can just probably go to uh, banshee's profile to see i think he's leading the promotional charge for it I think they fit into this this new sort of modern style. Were you were you and I the ones talking about what I think the next evolution of miniature art is? Yeah, yeah, like AI stuff. Yeah. Uh, maybe not so much AI as in. Um, automated uh interactive interactive yeah yeah interactive yeah yeah that was yeah. that was our conversation when i was talking about like maybe seeing major companies do different varying takes on um uh sculpting like these these are the guys yeah yeah i think they're really good yeah i, like, I really really good i love the balance between um historical and mm -hmm. caricature i think it's a really really nice space to play in um because miniature art is is never going to be a representation of a real human perfectly oh i love this one yeah um so that that caricature is uh is really cool yeah i love that yeah um i think that both of these do two things right mm. and i mean i'm not going to I'm not going to pretend to understand the mind of Banshee one little bit. Also, that Wolverine is what he's using to teach, which is pretty cool. Yeah, mad. Um, I'm not going to try to understand the mind of Badger, Banshee or even speak for him, but it feels like both of those pieces could be playing this really nice role at bridging both historical and fantasy painters together a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Just in the... What do you, can you see that? Yeah, I can. Yeah, I think that's good. Good call. I, I really like that. Yeah, it's a nice, yeah. it's a nice, um, it's a nice bridge. Yeah. I like, one thing I do like is I, I like the, uh, subtlety of detail. You know, we, yeah. we talked the other day about how digital sculptors yeah. are, have this tendency to really go ham and, um, overcook everything. Yeah, yeah. overcook everything. I, I would, I would guess that's a digital sculpt without, um, without knowing for a hundred percent certain, but that's, that's the, a really beautiful balance of texture and detail and you know just a few clean lines you know really mm -hmm. lets you really lets you play with well, your um, well planned robes like mm. it's, it's like this will be I, I can almost ensure this will be a fucking dream to paint. yeah and i'll tell you like what for anyone who's thinking about picking these up like these will be a dream it it really it really rams home just in case anyone had forgotten that fuck banshee's a good painter eh like he is, yeah. like he is yeah. a fucking yeah. banger. It just yeah. every now and then it just is like, all right, guys, I know you think I've lost the plot, but yeah. here I am with a fucking rip snorter. Yeah, I like that a lot. I'll, I'll probably get them. Yeah, I think I'll pick both of these up. Mm. Uh, all right, let's uh, let's head off, mate. It's been uh, been a fucking long hot day for me, so uh, we're off to. Um, this project this week I'll probably do a little bit more sculpting and some base work and then I will start painting the figures on the weekend so you'll probably see me kickstart this project uh, on Sunday's stream and then Bucks and I'll be back next week to talk about the impact and influence of music on your miniature art what a sh just heck is yeah. topic Share it around. Come and join oh, us. Come yeah. join us. Come and chat. join the stream and listen not just, to the not just not just us, but your uh, your input is uh, is important to us the too. Absolute to wankitude. The absolute wankitude that we're going to be talking about next week. <laughs>
It's gonna. Oh, be... It's gonna be dialed to uh... the max. Like it, it is going to be the most art wank. You oh are, my um... god, you are going you to be unbearable. All right, we're gonna go. We're gonna go <laughs> raid. Uh, Foolish monk. He's yeah, painting. Yeah, that's it. So that, that's gonna be the Chibi problem. Daredevil. <clears throat> and he's a good. He's a good dude. Yes. Do all of the fights. It's going to be an interesting topic, Bucks. I'm looking forward to it's it. It's going to be a great topic. I can't wait to hear you talk about it. Yeah. Beautiful friends. You're wonderful. See you all soon. Big Daniel out.